Israel and Hezbollah are on the brink of a full-scale war with rocket attacks and airstrikes occurring almost daily. Much of northern Israel has been evacuated, while many Christians in South Lebanon remain at home. George Thomas brings us this exclusive report from inside Hezbollah territory. It's a scene that has played out each year since 1890, when St. George's Church opened its doors here in the hills of South Lebanon. Lebanese Christians taking part in the Good Friday procession, carrying a cross with a Jesus Christ statue through the town of Kalea. This year was no different. Our Christian ancestors here faced war, and they never abandoned their land or their faith. They stood fast against all adversities, and we're going to do the same because that's the spirit we inherited from them. Clea and more than a dozen other Christian villages sit near the border with Israel. On October 8th, when Hezbollah started launching rockets at Israel in support of the Hamas attacks, Christians here suddenly found themselves caught in a conflict they didn't ask for or want. Just because one group decided to go to war with Israel, I'm almost 100 percent sure that all of us are victims of other people's agendas, and we want no part in it. Since war began in Gaza, the Islamic terror group controlling much of South Lebanon has fired more than 3,000 rockets at Israeli civilian and military targets from area hilltops and villages. Al-Qiyam, a village adjacent to Klea, has felt multiple Israeli rocket and missile strikes during this time. El Qiyam is one of Hezbollah's strongholds, and that's the main reason Israel is targeting that town. Some 90,000 people from South Lebanon, mostly Christians, evacuated to the north after Hezbollah started launching their rockets. Among those staying, Christian entrepreneur Georgia Salame forced to close his carpentry business due to constant shelling. We thought the war would end in 10 or 15 days, but it's kept going on and on, and most of the businesses in the villages got affected. And now, because of this, we have no income. Here in Klaia and other small Christian villages that dot the South Lebanon landscape, the big concern now is that Hezbollah could potentially come into their communities and use their neighborhoods in order to launch missile attacks against Israel. What scares us the most is if Hezbollah starts firing recklessly. For example, last week, they fired missiles at Israel, and most of their missiles didn't reach their targets, and they fell short hitting Lebanese towns. One of those missiles landed in the Christian village of Marjayun. Christians used to be the majority in the south, not anymore. Their numbers have slowly dwindled since Hezbollah moved in. The situation for Christians, not only here in the South, but the whole country, has been dismal, and there's no stability, and because of this, there's a lot of Christian migration, mostly from the South. Daher, a Christian who's reported on here for more than 30 years, fears this latest crisis will spark an even larger exodus. Honestly, people here don't dream anymore. We had a lot of dreams when we were young. We had dreams of living in peace and comfort. We worked hard for it, but the years proved us wrong, and all our dreams have evaporated. Father Pierre tells CBN News that despite being caught between Hezbollah and Israel, the Christians of South Lebanon will continue to preach a message of hope and peace. We are the peacemakers. Our Lord Jesus Christ told us to pray for our enemies, and that's why we're not going to stop praying. Our God can remove this dark cloud, and he's able to change and soften hearts and bring peace to our area. Let's join with those prayers of the dedicated Christians who have seen so much war and so much turmoil and still holding strong to the gospel in the middle of horrific conflict. It's, it's an encouraging to see their faith. Let us join with that faith and, yes, again, pray for the peace of the Middle East, the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Lebanon. I remember Lebanon back in the 1960s. I visited, and it was the jewel of the Mediterranean. And they proclaimed, we know how to do it. We know how to uh, have all the, the Jews and the, the Muslims and the Christians all living together, participating in the government. 
we know how to do this peacefully. And then the PLO moved in in the early 1970s and completely wrecked it. Let's have peace and let's get rid of this ideology that, that we have to drive Israel into the sea. Let that never be proclaimed again. We can pray for peace. We can have peace. Uh, we just need to be very dedicated to it and learn the example of these wonderful Christians.